Well, hi everybody, it's Greg, and today I'm going to show you how I convert this little $4 quartz clock that I bought from Target into an atomic clock using this atomic clock motor that I got from clockit.com. And with any luck, I'm going to make it look really easy, and you can try it too. Okay, step one, you need to take the clock apart just a little bit. It has these six screws around the back of it that are holding the, uh, holding the back to the front. So let's just take, uh, we'll take the battery out and let's remove these six screws. Okay, there we go. Now we need to remove the movement. With a lot of the movements like this, the hands just snap into place. So all I have to do is pull them off. All right, so the next step is I have to remove the movement, and uh, it's kind of uh, held in by these little snap things here. So I kind of have to uh, pull this, pull this apart a little bit, and maybe go ahead and use a screwdriver to kind of pry these tabs that are holding the movement in place. All right, so the movement is out. Now I have to put this new movement in. Only trouble is, look at that, it won't fit because of the position of those tabs that were already there. So I'm going to get a little Dremel style tool and just cut these tabs away. All right, I'll make a little extra effort to kind of clean that up so I don't have particles that are going to uh, get all over everything in the future. There are some holes in the back of uh, each of these motors, and they happen to have the same, same placement of holes in the old one and the new one. And those holes line up, so there are a couple of tabs built into the back of the clock, um, and the, the holes in the clock movements line up with these tabs to keep the motor from, you know, kind of swiveling back and forth when it's in place. So I can line up the new motor uh, right, up, right up with these same tabs that were uh, helping to hold the old motor uh, solidly in place. Because this motor is a little bit larger than the one that came out, uh, it's not going to fit quite right. I'm going to have to cut off just a little bit of this, this little circle, this ring around the back of, of the clock. So I'll, I'll make that cut right now before I put the the cutting tool away. Just make sure I get that exactly where I want it to be. Place this here, and now it lines up with the holes that were already, uh, the little tabs that were already there, and it's not going to swivel once I tighten that down. I'm going to put a little nut here on the front and that's going to hold everything tightly in place. Okay, I'm just going to clean this up with a razor knife before I call it good. All right, so now that this motor will fit here, I'll just push it in place. And then I have to go here and install the hardware that's going to hold it to the, to the clock. Just this nut that screws right on. I'm going to give it a, an extra twist with some pliers. There, it's pretty good. Now the, the new motor will not take the same hands that were pressed on on the old one. So uh, you can get a free set of new hands when you order a new motor. And I decided to get a different style just for the fun of it. So here's the new hour hand. I'm gonna just install this pointing straight up at the 12. And then I wanna make sure that it's 
I'll make sure that it's also kind of parallel to the face of the clock. I want to have enough room for the other hand to move around. Okay, so that's straight up. Okay, now the minute hand is going to go right here. And there's actually a tiny little nut to hold that in place comes there's some hardware that comes with with your clock motor. So I'm going to put this tiny nut on here. Okay. I'll just tighten that by hand. And again, I want to make sure that both hands are pointed as close as I can get them to straight up at the 12. And I can, uh, I can use my fingers just a little bit to kind of nudge them one way or the other. The second hand costs a little bit extra, but that's only like, I don't know, 35 cents or something to get a second hand. Now I'll point the second hand uh, straight up to the 12 and push that into place. And again, I want to double check that uh, they're all pointed straight up to the 12 and that they're also parallel to each other so they won't scrape against each other as they turn around during normal operation of this clock. And there you go. It looks like everything is in place. Now I want to, uh, well, put these screws back in and, and, uh, and, and attach the front and the back together again. Close it up. Now the thing to do is to remove a little, uh, little pin that uh, sits in here. It's an alignment pin that locks the shafts in place during shipping and during assembly and uh, this way with the pin in everything is set right up straight to the 12 and so when you when you're all done you pull this pin out before you apply power before you put a battery in the back of this clock and that will allow the shafts to move freely and everything's going to run great There's a switch back here for setting the time zone, and I've already set it to the mountain time zone, which is where I live. So uh, it's ready to go. I'm just going to put a battery in here, and um, the first thing it's going to do with a battery in is uh, have the hands do a complete circle around the hour. So uh, it, it's going to show you that uh, the, the hands are still aligned, kind of a self-diagnostic. As you can see, the second hand uh, is moving independently of the hour and minute hand. Uh, they move together. Second hand can do its own thing when it wants to. And it takes a little while for it to make the rounds to go all the way around to the 12. Now if you ha had the clock uh, just changing a battery and it wasn't at 12 o'clock, it wouldn't have to go all the way around 12 hours worth. If, if the clock were stopped when it was say 8 o'clock, uh, it could do this process uh, you know, the equivalent of four hours ahead until it's all lined up on the 12. And now that everything is lined up on the 12 o'clock position, it's going to start searching for the radio signal from WWVB and start processing the time data that it's going to receive. This will take just a few minutes, and uh, after it receives the information that it needs, uh, the hands are going to spin around to the proper position, and it will be completely synchronized with this little digital clock that's also a radio-controlled clock that I've got here next to it as a reference. Okay, as you can see, it took just a little bit less than four minutes to set itself. And as soon as it processed the data that it needed to set itself, the second hand spun around right to the correct position quickly, and uh, the hour and minute hands 
caught up as soon as they could, and there you go. It's uh, perfectly synchronized with a digital radio-controlled clock that I've been using for a while as well. So there you go, pretty simple really. All you need is the basic skills you would need to put together a snap-together model kit. Um, again, the clock cost me $4, bought it at Target. I just, I liked the way that it looked and I just thought, I'll get that clock, but I'll make it radio controlled. So the, the movement that I bought to place in there that made it radio controlled was from Clock It and they cost, well, recently they've been on sale for as low as $10 plus shipping. Uh, sometimes 13, 13.50, something like that, plus shipping. And you might be thinking, well, couldn't I shop around and maybe find a deal and find a clock that is already put together with an atomic motor in there and, you know, I wouldn't have to do all this stuff. Yeah, you could get a clock like that, but you couldn't get a clock like this. I like this clock. I wanted this clock. I very, uh, just wanted this one, but I wanted radio controlled. So that's my point. You can take uh, almost any clock you have, convert it to radio control, and you know, change the hands to some other style if you like that too. So anyway, there you go. Have a little fun with that and try it on your own.